Hello and welcome to the next uh, video on the Starfield chip building series. I am Kalde and today we are going to be looking at one of the most important style of ships that are going to be around in the game and in the universe because we are looking at a cargo hauler. And without cargo haulers, trust me, there is not a single society that is going to last very long anymore. And especially when you're looking at stuff into space, where of course we're moving masses, massive amounts of cargoes in the form of raw resources, resources to processing stations and uh, uh, made materials back to other facilities. And then finally, of course, your little ore expedition ends up in becoming a spaceship. And of course, when we're looking at spaceships, we need to go and have like a spaceship to haul more of the stuff. So we have a cargo hauler for you today, and this is a B-class cargo hauler. So we're stepping it down a tier from a lot of the uh, C-class stuff that I've been doing. We're going for the middle tier of ship here, which provides us still with more than enough uh, cargo capacity, while just being a little bit more compact and a little bit easier, of course, to get to achieve, to get around and play with this ship, in fact. So we have, of course, it laid out in its decks, as always, from a left to right, deck one, deck two, and deck three. Now, I will say in this design, we went with a few choices for aesthetical reasons over pure function, but it still has plenty of function. And if you wish to, you could definitely go full on function with it. To start off then with deck one, what do we have for habitation? Well, we have our Nova Galactic Landing Bay and that's it. There are no other habitation modules on deck one. Instead, we find a total of six cargo holds running down the spine of the ship here. These cargo holds are the Galleon S204 cargo holds and they are the largest cargo hold available to us in the game. Now, when you look at cargo holds, the main thing that you worry about is how much space they take up on your ship and how many modules you can have. The actual cargo capacity to mass of the cargo base is all very, very close to a level where it really doesn't matter all that much which ones you're using. Now, besides our cargo capacity, we of course need some landing gears and we have a lot of landing gears. In fact, we have a total of 14. And again, we're going here with Nova Galactic because they have those really high thrust capacity landing gears and they also look quite chunky, which makes them fit a ship like this, which feels like it would have a lot of mass to it. And then in the rear, we also find ourselves with a pair of braking engines, so reverse thrusters. Of course, they don't do anything in the game, but they look the part and they make the ship feel like a bit more realistic. And then finally, on the sides of these landing gears here, we have a bunch of the Tayo side caps because they hide the rather somewhat ugly uh, lines of these landing gear modules quite neatly and gives the ship a much better overall visual appeal. Going then into deck two, here we find some of our habitation stuff. And again, it's not a whole lot because we are a cargo hauler. We don't need a whole lot of habitation modules. We just need enough places to sleep eat and work and that's exactly what we find starting off with a cockpit from nova galactic this is one of their smaller ones it just fits really nicely with the design so that's the reason i'm running with that one on top of the cockpit we also find the first of our weapon systems a eradicator 75 uh, third behind that we have our galactic storeroom or a companion way of course of your choice this is where we enter from the bay into the habitation area. And this is also where we find the ladder up to deck three and our docking module. On the left here, we have a all in one bird, A from Nova Galactic. This acts as your captain's quarters because it only has one bed and it has the right amount of equipment in there to make it feel like your captain's quarters. Then on the right, we have another all in one bird from Nova Galactic, but this time the B module. And this comes with two beds, giving us, you know, for space for three crew members on board. Then in the back here, we have a Nova Galactic control station. But if you wanted to, you could, for example, also look at putting a workshop here. If you wanted some of your crafting stations, I went more for a role play aesthetic in this design. And this is connected to the corridor way here through a Hope Tech hub spine. Now for our cargo here. We show the cargo containers that we're using for our visual appeal, and those are being the Stormax 60 cargo holds. 
the reason I'm using these over all of the galleons is, as I said, purely that aesthetic reason. These look like actual containers, and when the ship is fully assembled, it really looks like you can just come up to the side of the ship, grab one of the containers, take it out, put a new one, and slide it straight back in there. So it just feels very good, and it gives you that look of a cargo ship, and what's what we're going after for this build. If you want to go full-on cargo capacity, try to replace them with as many of these Galleon 204 cargo holds as you can get away with before the game tells you, no, I'm not doing that anymore. Because those, of course, hold a lot more cargo individually. Then in the back here we have uh, some of the Stroud engine brazers that go into the Nova wings. And that is where we find some more of our turreted weapon systems. So we have PBO 100s. We have four of these, two on the rear wings, two on the front wings. And on the rear wings here on the edge, we also have two more of these eradicator turrets. So we have a total of seven particle beam turrets on this ship, which should be plenty to deal with any light pirate attacks that you may encounter. But of course, if things get hairy, your job is to just get the fuck out of there in very simple terms. Then in the back, we have three fuel tanks. These are the 900T HE fuel tanks. Our jump range is somewhat more restrictive because of the mass we're running with, so we may need to make a route that is a little bit more circumferential. And of course, every time we need to stop, we risk getting into an encounter, so we try to avoid it as much as possible. So we're bringing in as much fuel as we can carry. For our engines, we find two of them on this deck, and these are the SAE 560 engines. These are pretty much your top tier B grade engines. And this particular design fits really well with the lines of this ship. Now, of course, there are other B-grade engines, and you can choose which ones you have available to you. We also find two more cargo bays on the edge of those engines here, these being the Dagama 1020 cargo holds. And again, these are more there for a visual appeal reason than anything else. Then finally, upwards to the top deck. Well, we have one more collective storeroom here, which is where we'll also find our docking module. And that leads into the back of a Tayo engineering bay. And I think that this particular bay looks really cool on uh, this style of ship, both from the exterior appeal, but also from the interior. We find two more of our braking engines up front here, and also two more in the rear. We also find four more of the Stormax cargo holds on each side. Them really being stacked on top of each other, that makes us look like a cargo ship, as we said. And then in here in the center we also find our reactor, on top of which I put a shield generator. And behind that we find the graft drive. The graft drive in question is being flanked by two more of the galleon cargo holds, because of course these provide with our bulk capacity, and we can nicely hide them away here. Then in the back we have two more galleon, but these are then the 203 cargo holds. They have still a fairly nice visual appeal, and they provide a little bit of that final rounding off that we, you know, kind of desire with the look of this ship, and two more of our SAE 560-60 engines. Finally, a couple of radiators on top in the rear here, just a little bit of visual uh, playing around with, but you'll notice overall that the amount of structural components in here, so the things that we put on there for visual reasons, is very limited. We've really gone all out with using the functional modules uh, to create part of our design wherever we could get away with them. Let's take a look at it when all of this is going to be stacked together. First, here's your frontal view of them. Now you can get a good idea of the totality of the layout of these decks. So they're pretty much all flat as that you saw them uh, when we're looking at them from the top, with the exception of this one rear fuel tank in the middle that is actually resting on deck two and three, while as the other fuel tanks, of course, are resting on deck one and two. All the other modules are, of course, single decks, so they literally just pancake on top of each other. So let's cancel the modification and look at it when it's fully laid out. So you can see here, this is the ship in an in full. We have a neatly stacked row of these containers, and it really looks like if you go in here from the side, you can just go in there, as I said, grab one of those containers and slot a new one into there. You can also see that these Dio and coffers here really hide those landing gears very nicely. And it just gives the ship a bit more of a cleaner line. It is, of course, not a you know, like angled, lovely shaped vessel, but it is a very purposeful vessel. 
and you still want to make sure that things look all right as much as possible and i think these really help with that your overall top view of course is going to be very much all of that square place because while we're running with those cargo containers they are the most important bit they are the ones that dictate the design and layout of our ship we cannot go and make it all flowy with wing bits going in and out of the places because we want it to look functional and that is what we have done here now as i said if you wanted more cargo capacity you can replace these with other ones and of course if you don't have the skills you can also put other ones in here the final option what you can also do if we go back into the modification side of things and take a look at the cargo base these are also available in different capacities and each of these capacities comes with a different color scheme to them and that is something that you could really play around with so if you wanted to have like different color scheme containers in there you could do that for this case because you know it looks nice uh, in my opinion i like things where they're a little bit more even i went with all of these red containers but you can also just as i said mix and match them just for the visual appeal they will of course if you go down a little bit you lose a bit of cargo capacity but it's not going to be something that is going to be too bad because quite a fairly large chunk of course of our cargo capacity is actually hidden away within these galleon cargo holds instead so yeah that is it a lovely b class cargo holder here it will do a great job in getting stuff from a to b of course and well what else do you need for a cargo holder that's what they need to do they need to pick up the stuff and get it to where it needs to go as fast as possible and reliably as possible and i think with this particular ship we can easily achieve those goals now of course if you're looking to haul even more cargo you want to go into c grade components you simply add more you just expand the design a little bit we can go about a module longer easily and you can add some more containers in that that aspect and of course if you go in full c grade components where you're probably going want to go max capacity like I said, you go with the galleon cargo holds here, either the 204s or maybe you're willing to take a small hit in capacity for design reasons and maybe you will go with some of the 203s. Like one of the stacks that you could do if you would do a 3 stack, I think would look fairly nice, is if you take one of these and then you stack these like this and then we also flip you around and do it like this. So if you do it stack it like this that also provides you with a fairly nice looking sort of cargo capacity bay so that's definitely another option to run with and maybe if you wanted to you could even add on top uh, of this bay even more the choice as they say is entirely yours but it allows you to play around with this and you just copy the entirety of this thing over and that was no <laughs> Copy it over and just extend it and there you go that is the side of your ship and that is going to then dictate the rest of your ship's design and that's one of the cool things you can do when you're designing ships is having the function really dictate the design of your vessel and in this case we've done that by saying okay i wanted those containers here on the side and i wanted them accessible so that dictated the design of this ship and that ended up us with this particular design Colorwise, I went with a mix of grey, white, and of course the reds from these containers, which I tried to pull through in some of the other bits. And the greys, because like, hey, that would be a very basic sort of uh, like coating, where perhaps heat doesn't really matter all that much, so whatever. And then I added some white in here to add to the contrast, and also signify a little bit like outlines of the ship. And a final little bit of blue here in the front, as a call back to the Maersk shipping line, of course, because they have the blue uh, main hull like of the ships are painted blue. So I wanted a small little call back to that because this is, of course, a cargo uh, hauler. So yeah, that is it for the ship itself. I'll take you through the relatively small interior. And then we are all done again. So while we're getting through that interior, I'll just show you around and talk about a few other things. Um, people, of course, have been coming up with suggestions for stuff to do video-wise, and I am looking at all of that, and I'm planning to do a lot more and have some of my own ideas as well. So I am planning to do a few more 
uh, videos, of course, regarding some of the ship designs that I'm doing, but also more guide stuff, like, for example, how you can paint your ships in certain ways, and also come up with more design uh, guide-wise. It's like, okay, what can you do for certain types of ship? Like, what would you expect? How would we have interiors laid out, etc.? So these would be more a mix of like a role-playing uh, idea behind it and also function into the game. Uh, Schedule-wise, I think what we'll be trying to achieve is going for three videos a week. So that would be a Monday, Wednesday and Friday release. And then I may also release something on a Saturday. Uh, and that would then be some other style of content that I was want to play around with, experiment with. So for the next few weeks at least, uh, you can expect um, shipbuilding stuff for Starfield for Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays, and then on Saturdays potentially some other content, and after that we'll see how things are going. This is all a little bit um, new, let's put it safely, like I've made some videos and stuff in the past, but nothing really blew up, for which thank you all so much, and also uh, thank you YouTube and its magic algorithm which nobody understands. But mainly all of you for actually, you know, being here and especially leaving all of those comments. Like, that's the most interesting part for me when it comes to making these videos. Like, it's the, the comments, uh, interactions through that, and also the ideas and feedback you can get from that. And besides that, well, I'm also a numbers person, so I kind of like watching those analytics. Probably strange, but I just like numbers. But yeah, that is the plan, and this was the interior layout. You can see it is a very small ship on the interior, but it provides us everything that we need. So with that all said, I think we shall round off our little video here by taking this one into orbit. And with that, I would like to thank you all very much for watching all of these videos, for all of your comments. As I said, they are really uh, the most interesting bit of it, and I hope to see many more of them. For now, I have been Kade. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, goodbye.